Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bike Social. I'm Michael Mann, and here we are in France on the launch of the 2022 Kawasaki Z650 RS. Here it is. And in this video, we'll talk about all of the different components, what's new, uh, what carries over from the Z650, what carries over from the old B1 from the late 70s. And then we're gonna go on a ride. So I'll introduce you to the whole bike, all the different components, and then we'll have a little ride and you can join me. Essentially, we've got a 7,549 pound uh, model. There's three different colors. Uh, it's 150 pounds extra for this lovely emerald green uh, on top of the base price. Available in dealerships very, very soon uh, in the UK in November. The bike is a new bike for 2022. It's kind of retro styled and it's based very heavily on the Z650 that came out two years ago, or for the 2020 model, uh, mechanically uh, speaking. So you've still got the 649cc parallel twin, makes around 67 horsepower, A2 compliant, and that's a, a really important fact, actually. The, the company Kawasaki are, are talking very heavily about focusing on the learner riders, the beginner riders, those who are perhaps a little less confident or need a little bit of, uh, of building up on their, on their motorcycling journey. So yes, all right, well, let's have a little look around the bike to begin with. All right, so let's have a little looky at the bike then, shall we? So based very much on the Z650, but with different subframe, tank, styling, and that sort of duck style, finish at the rear, the pinstripe down there, different brake discs you know uh, a lot of the Kawasaki bikes have that sort of pedal style brake disc but this one because it wanted to or because the design focus was all about uh, yesteryear and, and looking at back at the, the sort of the beginning of the Z range uh, that's why they wanted to go with that and the same goes for the wheels as well so we've got two 300 mil disc Nissan calipers and a single 220 disc at the back uh, these are the <laughs> you could call them right way up forks but there's so many bikes now with upside down forks. At what point does upside down become the right way up? Maybe these are upside down. 41 mil. And at the rear, you've got near horizontal shock tucked in there, look. Adjustable for preload. There's your exhaust. And that's like I said, you can get the full acrobobic system on the optional extras list, but that's about 1,800 pounds worth. So they claim this tank, it's a 12 litre tank. It looks really sort of streamlined and slim, doesn't it? Narrow narrow the whole bike is very narrow if we look at it from the rear you can see that especially that waist where the fuel tank meets the seat and the the distance between the foot pegs as well it makes the bike very easy to maneuver uh, not only when you're riding it but also when you're sort of wheeling it about operationally it's really simple you haven't got many buttons to to worry about other than the traditional indicators lights horn hazards and then you've got a, a tiny little sort of trip thing here which will run you through your let's turn that on and then that can tell you what that means so there it is there's your lcd display look and then you can scroll through uh, average mpg you've got trips range odometer obviously all that will work differently when your engine is running but those twin clocks add into the styling as do the as does the headlight as do the gold wheels. Not to everybody's taste, I quite like them. And then the exhaust runs really quite open, isn't it, down here? It could almost do with a, a little sort of shroud or, I don't know, some kind of protective thing in there. You can get a radiator guard, you can get lots of little um, uh, protectors, uh, engine casing protectors. So the headlight itself is LED, blending the retro star with modern designs. And yeah, Kawasaki talk, having a, talk about having a, a top priority of the A2, so younger or less experienced riders who are likely to want to move the walk around easily at walking pace, That's hence that narrow chassis we talked about. We've got the 649cc parallel twin, it makes 67.3 brake horsepower, 50.2 kilowatts. And peak power is up at 8,000 RPM, and I said when we're riding, or you'll see from when we do ride, that the rev range is, is really nicely broad. It's very usable between sort of two and a half, three thousand RPM all the way through to 
eight, eight and a half without getting too breathless. Peak torque's at 6,700 and that's 64 Newton meters and 47.2 foot pounds. It's a nicely basic bike. It, it kind of fits all that styling. It's got a beautiful engine, great chassis, nice and narrow. It's got so much going for it, you know. Real, a charming bike. Easy to get on with, not too complicated, not too intimidating. It's got plenty of low to mid drives. It's going to be nice and easy to use around cities and towns uh, with that light clutch lever uh, movement as well. But you can, you can really wind it on, you know, if you want to let your hair down. It's got the ability to, to hitch its skirt up and give you a little buzz. A little bit vibey through the pegs, nothing too much to worry about. I don't think it would be of much concern to many people, but it's worth noting. The tyres it comes on are the Dunlop Sport Max Road Smart 2. It's a bit of a mouthful, but they're fine, they're great, they're all right. They've handled the terrain around here very well. It's been a bit sketchy in places with some wet bits under the trees. Be interesting to get a pillion on here for their opinion. I think those, those pegs are fairly high. Uh, compared to where you're going to be sitting, but probably no higher than any 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 of its rivals. Certainly the pegs are quite high for a riding position. The seat height on this is actually a little bit taller than the Z650, but it's an uncomplicated machine that looks stylish, it looks cool. Well, now that we've seen it up close and in detail, should we go and have a little ride? So you join me on board, you know it's the Z650 RS and this is, I'm told, a rather spectacular 10 kilometer piece of road. But yeah, so this is the uh, press launch and we've been able to, or we, I, I've been able to spend quite a bit of time with the bike already, really getting used to, getting familiar with this parallel twin 650 middleweight bike. I call it a lightweight middleweight, mainly because middleweight is kind of the category and lightweight because it is only, well it weighs, uh, they call it curb weight, so kind of, oh yeah, we're all fueled up and good to go, 187 kilograms, which is very light and perfect for the type of audience that Kawasaki want to sell this to. I mean, they're never going to say no to any sales for anybody, but they think that that A2 license category is prime and perfect for this type of bike. So much so that they've actually, uh, Kawasaki UK, have ordered more of the this, the RS, than they have the standard 650, Z650, and Ninja 650 as well. So they think this is going to sell more. I, I tend to agree, I think the styling is, is, it really sets it apart from, certainly from the Z650 and the Ninja, and I think that it becomes, it makes it a lot more attractive for newer riders. But it faces stiff competition, you know. We've got the Yamaha XSR 700, you've got the uh, Triumph Trident. It's a competitive marketplace. You'd even go to say, well, probably the uh, that new CF Moto, the Chinese, um, uh, imported into the UK. They, it's called the, the CLX 700, I believe. Oh, can we get by, Mr. Yes, we can. Come on, let's lose that talk. Say thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. And thankfully, I've got my guide rider here in front of me, Guy, ex-policeman, now working for Kawasaki, local. Uh, he knows his way around these parts, which is great. Where were we? Yeah, so using the, so the this is, it's A2 license compatible, I, you have to have an A2 license kit. So in, in standard form, it's got 67 brake horsepower, um, which is not eligible for A2 licenses, but you can get the restricted kit and it, it, it's, I think it's just simply plugging into a computer at a recognized dealer. Um, for a, a few quid. Clearly once you've got your full license you can then have it de-restricted for probably the same amount of quids. Wow, can you see that? Spectacular! So yeah, engine. Peachy. Really pokey. Really beautiful. Lovely engine. There's no different to the Z650. So mechanically this bike is exactly the same as that, it's, the, it's all the sort of the styling and there's a few extra little bits that we've already talked about that are, that are different to the Z, 
but it means that the engine is still nice and perky behaves really well from around sort of two and a half three thousand rpm uh, all the way up to eight or nine it doesn't mind being revved with red lines right up to ten I think but it's got that nice long span of revs you're not forever changing gear and it's got a great note as well it sounds uh, at low at low revs it sounds like a single uh, it's almost thumping you can almost hear the ind you know, individual cylinders popping about but it's it's lovely it just picks up nicely look at that Woo! nice and sprightly ideal for it's ideal for the less experienced because it's a very tractable engine it's a lovely vibey free revving motor that is ever so easy to get used to um, oh look at this so the Z900 RS has got those sort of air cooling fins all part of the styling uh, which this one doesn't And some people on the social media have mentioned it, that they'd like it. I don't think it detracts necessarily from the overall look and feel of the bike. Styling's a very personal choice. I like what it stands for, this sort of retro sport uh, style that the bike carries. Uh, on one side of the coin you could say that its target audience probably like the fact that it looks kind of retro cool they're not that bothered about the fact that it's taken its styling cues from the older bike of 19 the late 70s but yeah so it's ideal really um as a as a as a learner friendly bike i don't like pigeonholing things as learner friendly because it's it you can really wind it on you can really sort it out you know it's got a lot of guts 67 horsepower on paper it isn't that much it's not gonna frighten any litre class super bikes but it's still got plenty of poke and because the bike is so light that makes a big difference your power to weight ratio is uh, is is lovely and it means that you've got you can you can be aggressive with it you can literally pick up its skirt and it'll and, and you can up the ante in terms of your aggression of, of riding equally you can just plod about a bit it's it's very versatile uh, all connected to a, a gearbox this is uh, so six big gearbox really light clutch action again really uh, user friendly it's uh, span adjustable as is the brake lever um, <coughs> and the, the clutch lever is very light it makes getting away and, and, and riding around town very easy but the gears are tall enough like I said so you've got taller gears and you've got the uh, I said earlier on about the, uh, the the breadth of revs to play with which means that you're not forever changing gear and if you're in town if you're you know it's sub 30 miles an hour first second possibly even third gear it's just really easy to change the gear selector lever uh, requires you to be fairly precise but again it's it's a good thing for those who are less experienced because you can be you get that kind of reassuring clunk it's not heavy it's not a massive long throw you're not going to be wearing out your ankle and you've got your gear position indicator uh, right slap bang in the center of that uh, display down here nice and bold again makes it easy to to know where you're at very narrow bike the fuel tank's very narrow you see down here it's also quite low you sit quite tall on the bike the tank is uh, 12 litres uh, we've been running around at uh, 5.3 litres per 100 kilometres which I think is somewhere low high 50s low 60s in terms of MPG yeah so it's fairly economical and because it's such a small fuel tank it's uh, it's not going to carry too much weight either or too much excess weight the frame itself tubular steel and it is uh, it only weighs 13 and a half kilos just under 14 kilos for the whole frame uh, the subframe on this is slightly different to the s to the z650 uh, and that's a bit of that's to do with the styling yeah the pallion seats okay it's wide enough this the, the pegs are quite high up 
In fact, the pegs for the rider position are quite high up. I'm six foot tall, 33 inch legs, uh, inside leg, and I find it a little bit cramped. The seat height on this bike is a little bit different to the Z, um, to the standard 650. This is 820, he says with a question mark. No, it is. It is 820, and then you can get a lower seat height as an optional extra, which is 800 mil which I, th I think is still a little high. I think this, the Z650 is 790. I think if you're, gonna, if you're north of six foot, uh, you're, gonna, you're not gonna want to spend too long in the saddle. It doesn't look that cramped from here. The good thing is that you're not, your legs are not particularly splayed out, so it's nice and narrow. Uh, and also that means that you can manipulate the weight of the bike really, really easily. So I say it's 187 kilos, plus me on the top was at 80 and a bit on top, but the, the bike itself is very easy to manage uh, at, at low or no speeds, dead easy to manoeuvre, walk around. Um, it sits nicely on that side stand, it's not, it doesn't lean over too far, it doesn't sit up too high, up too erect. Kawasaki has done a lot of work, uh, R&D work, into what this bike means, who it's going to be best aimed at uh, customer wise. I think they put it together really well, it looks neat, it's nice to cross out. I do like it in this emerald green, it's a I wouldn't say it's Marmite, it's not as bad as that, it's, you know, it's people don't love it or hate it, it's, it's, it's perhaps an acquired taste, but I really fancy it. And also it does give you that, 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 that sort of, uh, you can reminisce about the, uh, the bikes from the late, the late 70s. Uh, three colours we talked about, so that the black one uh, is the, so that, that comes with the standard price of 7549 and then it's 7699 so an extra 150 pounds if you want this the green one or the grey and ebony version it's comfortable enough despite that uh, the what we're talking about with the peg height it does give it a lot of ground clearance you've got some decent rubber on here these dunlops the seat itself again looks the part looks pretty cool it's fairly soft there's a lot of padding there that's quite spongy so it's not particularly well supportive and unfortunately the the suspension is not particularly supportive either it's a little bit spongy uh, more so at the rear than the front the rear is adjustable for preload um, but you've got to also understand that uh, you, you know the bike is designed for a particular type of customer type of type of rider and you know, dare I say that the type who don't necessarily worry about suspension settings or firmness being a naked bike there's no wind protection but I haven't felt uncomfortable um, we haven't been going at any sort of motorway speeds today particularly uh, so I can't really comment on on how that would feel you know 70 miles an hour or so one thing I do want to say is that at low RPM, first, second, third gear, you do get that little snatch. It's, it feels as though the throttle connection is just missing something. Like the, it's not like it's not good with the fueling, but it's, it's just that little, that, that tiny little bit between off and on throttle. There's a tiny little movement, and it's just a little bit. I'm accentuating it now with a head movement, with a head jerk, but that's what it feels like. And it's important that. I've, I've made that point because if I don't people will question my, my judgment it would be interesting to ride these bikes or this bike against those rivals we talked about from Yamaha CF Moto and Triumph the mirror is good nice and stable easy to maneuver maneuver nice and wide and they've also got that the style again they're talking about the the overall look and feel of the bike it's nice because it stands out um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of bikes in this in, in this in this marketplace, and some of them don't have the personality. I'm not just talking about the engine personality. I'm talking about the the look of the bike. It does look good. Sounds good. Good engine. What's your deposit? A couple of thousand pounds. Not even that, probably. And then you're 99 pounds a month over three years. It's, uh, pretty good value quite a few optional extras you could buy you could buy do you know what you could buy a full acrobat system for it which is about 1800 quid or what is essentially a quarter of the price of the bike other noteworthy extras include uh, an under seat USB charger 
and uh, what's quite cool is that you've got uh, now where can I show you this the Kawasaki logo down here on the side of the tank is the you know modern day modern day branding but you can buy a, 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 the version that goes on there that was the old branding so the the old Kawasaki logo is a bit, bit more slanted almost like italics which is wicked I think well, they're playing a very quaint they're playing uh, boule or peton I don't know the difference what I do know is that I like this motorbike it's very basic it's very easy to understand there's nothing too complicated or overwhelming about it you don't need to worry about engine modes or traction control settings you haven't even got heater grips there's no there's, there's a simplicity to it that's charming it needs to hold its own in this category it's com it's 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 a, a competitive place all of the bikes that we talked about already are anywhere between six and a half and I guess top end of seven so it just depends on what suits you the best for the type of riding you want to do or the type of or the style of bike that you want to be riding around on this has got a lot going for it for sure I love the chassis I love how easy it is to maneuver it's very light it's narrow so you can get through little gaps if you were riding in cities or towns and you were doing a bit of filtering or diving through the traffic it is uh, easy to steer it's economical a really decent engine uh, it's got a lot of character and it's 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 got a, a nice spread of performance too so my son's watched that film wreck it Ralph and he says it's all about arcade games and, and, and old old-fashioned arcade games and it uh, he says in that he said retro that means old but cool and I like that So overall, overall impressions are very positive. I think it's a cracking price. I think the chassis and the engine, the gearbox, the light clutch, the overall dimensions uh, of the bike are all really positive. There's that slight question mark of the, the, the that kind of snattiness at the bottom end of the throttle, or sorry, bottom end of the rev range, sort of low first, second, third gear, that little on off uh, jerk. I would question, what else would I question? Possibly the suspension quality. It's a little bit spongy, but again, I think the right, the audience that uh, Kawasaki are going for here, it's not much of an issue. And the only other thing to mention on what is possibly a negative list is the, the, the sponginess of that, uh, the saddle. It's really soft. Some people might like that though. They might get on with a bit more of comfort in the seat. Um, I've got to say, I don't mind it as much as I thought I would. I thought when I first got on the bike early this morning, it would be uh, a bit of an issue, but it wasn't and it hasn't been. The detail on the bike's lovely. I like the presentation of the clocks. I like the, 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 the quality bits, the, the, sort of the, the build quality, especially around the headlights. Uh, across the, despite the dash, the cockpit here, there's lots of room, but there's also, like it's quite neat. It's a, like I said, it's a very, a, a, a simple bike to understand and to ride. So with that, Mesdames et Messieurs, I will say merci for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the ride, and I'll see you next time. Hey, don't forget to list any questions or comments, concerns or thoughts in the section below I'll do my best to get back to you if I don't know the answer then I'll get someone from Kawasaki to do so see you then